Shot. Hello again. How you doing? All right, we're Deep doing purple. well. Yes, thank you. Amazing. How are you feeling now? Uh, yeah, as usual. We're pretty good. Uh, these things come along rarely, so uh, uh, it's been a very pleasant afternoon and uh, in good company, and we're very honoured. Any any good chance that uh, that could sort of inspire new new musical directions? Well, <laughs> sitting next to Tim Rice always gives you inspiration, and I've been looking at pictures of his boat, which is just <laughs> absolutely lovely. So I'm dreaming of going out for a trip on it. Has he got oars and everything? It? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have you ever thought of the musical? Sorry? Musical, sort of, going down the musical route. Have I ever thought of doing yes, that? Yes, writing a musical, for example. I have written a couple of um, musicals that never been... Oh, I wrote one that was performed once, yes, but not, not successfully. I don't mean that artistically, I mean it commercially. So, <laughs> not really, no, we've been too busy doing stuff like that. I mean, I was asked to do the movie for Jesus Christ Superstar, and it was impossible because I was so happy with Purple, and uh, we were, we've been pretty busy for the last 50 years. Yes, yeah. I, 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 well, mm. yeah, as I said, collectively, what, what do you put... You know, the, the fact that the music is still sort of striking the chord now, what do you put it down to? Well, it's quite rich. I mean, there's quite a, a broad base of influences that came in to make up the chemistry, the human chemistry of the band. So there's, it's not unidirectional. There, there's humour, there's texture, there's dynamics, there's, there's quite a lot in it. And so, it, it, I mean, even if you don't like it, it won't get boring. And, that's, and, and I think the level of musicianship is also quite important. I mean, that's, that's been... Sort of help come along and see people performing live and doing that kind of stuff, making the impossible look effortless. And I think that's, you know, that's pretty amazing. And, you know, does it, is this something that's going to continue and continue? Oh, for hundreds of years. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. I mean, yes. These we don't know. We're going into cryogenics, so, you know, we'll be back in 300 years' time. Hard to tell. Hard to tell. Excellent. Well... It's a pleasure and congratulations again. Thank you very much. Very nice. Thank you. Okay. Well, the Noel Awards. I mean, being recognised here, it's got to be high up on the, on your list of achievements. Well, it, it's sort of unexpected, but it's always nice when it happens. Uh, I suppose if you if you hang around long enough and just keep doing what you do, uh, these sort of things happen, you know, and, and they're, they're very very satisfying. Uh, and it's nice to know that other people remember that you still play your trade and entertain people. That's well, that's the name of the game, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. and you're still doing that. I mean, oh, you've yeah. clearly known how to do it all your life. What do you think that it was in Deep Purple that Sorry? connects? What do you think it was? In Deep, it is in Deep Purple that connects so well with, with an audience? I think it doesn't fit any, any particular mould. I think it's open to... Uh, trying anything it wants musically and uh, usually getting away with it. And when you do that, of course, you won't please everybody. You know, you take a chance, do something different, but that's the fun of it. And really, nobody knows what's going to happen next, including us. <laughs> and that's the fun of it, you know, and that sort of uh, chancy element connects with a lot of people. You know, it just keeps the interest up. Uh, not only for them, but for us. If you do the same thing over and over again, after 50 years, you might just get you know, a bit tired of it. So, Are you still enjoying it as much? Oh, I do, yeah. In fact, I'm actually gigging tonight at Ronnie Scott because I've got no work with Purple till September. So I've got a week playing there having fun, you know. That's what I do. If I don't, if I don't play drums, I don't do anything. I sit at home, watch football and drink beer. <laughs> I mean, so I might as well do something that. useful, you know. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Ronnie Scott's a lovely little, a lovely place. You must have yeah. seen that change over the years. Which, what, what do you? I don't think it changes. I think the the glory is it doesn't change. I think they have to reinvent how they do it. But uh, the place still has that wonderful magic that Ronnie created all those yeah. years ago. It's an intimate, nice sounding room. Yes. And in London, it has no competition. Very you know, true. It's where you go. And that's where the, the players go, you know. What about Deep Purple, larger venues? What, what's your favourite sort of UK venue? Well, it's difficult. The venues change so quickly now. There's new buildings going up all the time. The new buildings are better than the old ones. They're built with sound in mind. They're not just one function, you know, entities. They, they, they'll do sports, they'll do conferences, they'll do music. So the, the newer ones are much better to play because you have an acoustic chance. You know, I mean, God bless the Albert Hall, it's wonderful, but you know, it's a, hello, 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 hello. <laughs> it's not the best, you know, no, so no. The, the newer halls are pretty good, so I don't mind. So long as I have a chance on stage to hear what I'm playing, I'm sort of happy. And next, release-wise? Uh, we've, we've messed around in the studio for a few weeks. Uh, we went to Nashville last month. 
We've got some stuff and we're not making any promises on it. If it turns out to be good enough, we'll do something with it. And if it doesn't, we've had five, five nice weeks in Nashville. <laughs> <laughs> what is it about Nashville? Why, why, why did you choose that? Well, we used to have London, New York, Los Angeles as the, the recording centers of the world. They're basically gone now. You know, we have Abbey Road. That's it, you know, uh, New York's gone, Los Angeles has gone, not, they don't do it anymore. So many studios are tiny little rooms for electronic music. Nashville is the center of music now, not just country and western, but jazz, rock, bebop, classical music. The infrastructure is still there to do all this stuff. And because it's a funky little town, when you finish work, you can go and play. Yeah. And everything's within five or six blocks of each other. So it's very, very conducive for musicians to go and relax and do what they have to do. Great fun. And uh, here, obviously, there's a lot of uh, major, major legends, as yourself, musical legends. Anyone that you're looking forward to chatting to? Uh, I, I won't know till I, till I see them, you know. <laughs> uh, I'm a pretty low-key guy when it comes to this, so lots of people that you might know, I would never have heard of. I do what I do and I tend to keep it very much focused on that. I don't really take any notice of what anybody else is doing. Uh, most of it I don't like, and if I did like it, it's probably something I've liked for the last 40, 50 years. Well, they probably know you. Have a, have a wonderful day and thanks a lot for your time. My pleasure. Thank you. Thanks Cheers. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Ivan Avana Awards. How uh, do you feel to be here and to be awarded? Um, highly honoured. It's something I never expected. And uh, as I've said a few times, my granddad would have been thrilled to bits because Ivan Avella was a great hero of his. And uh, so, and I think they've established themselves over the years as the the, be the best awards. So it, it it really is very nice to be here. In terms of musicianship, yes. Was your granddad a musician himself? He was a singer. Yeah, he, was, he sang opera. You know, Excellent. Bass baritone. Is that how you sort of entered into the musical world? My house was full of music. My uncle was a jazz pianist. Uh, my grandmother taught ballet, so we were full of Sh Tchaikovsky, Boogie Woogie, Stride Piano, Verdi, whatever. It was, it was, and I was a boy soprano in the church choir, so the house was rocking. <laughs> Pavarotti's new film, funny enough, is coming out. Uh, we're going to see I saw a trailer. I got yeah. invited to the uh, the, pre the preview um, in Los Angeles, but I was in Nashville, and I, I've just flown back actually, and so I couldn't make it. But I'm looking forward to seeing it. Excellent. And uh, I mean, advice for young young people getting into the industry these days. What would you uh, What would you say? Um, I don't think they need much advice, really. Except we do know that. Um, I would say because. With Deep Purple, when we started, our musical influences were so broad from the members of the band, from orchestral composition to jazz, blues, rock and roll, big band swing, folk music, that was all part of it. So absorb those influences as wide as you possibly can. And I think that probably give you, you know, when you find your own voice, when you find your own style, you'll, you'll have a broader base um, for the future. Yeah, I mean, and Deep Purple, why do you think the music has lasted so long and stood the test of time and still, you know, stands up today? Why has what lasted so long? Uh, your music. I don't, I don't know. Um, it's hard to explain. Uh, I think we were very lucky with timing uh, when music was expanding internationally. I mean, none of what we have today existed then. I mean, there was no internet, there was no, um, there was nothing. I mean, we, we were only allowed to take 20 pounds out of the country because of foreign exchange, foreign exchange rules. So uh, it was uh, a different world then. Absolutely. And we were lucky. We were part of the great expansion. Yes, yes, it was an expansive time. What, what are your best memories back in, uh, back in those sort of heady days? Well, hazy, hazy memories, obviously. <laughs> um, but I think the joy, the the transition from semi-professional to professional was, I mean, just awesome. And my first professional tour in 1965 was um, supporting Dusty Springfield. We did it with a band called Episode Six. We did four minutes to open the first half and seven minutes to open the second half. And it was um, absolutely amazing to watch her work and to be in her presence and see her professionalism and her kindness and her magic voice was an aspiration. It was just, I mean, things I shall never forget. And 
fantastic. And there's a lot of uh, a lot of musical legends in the room tonight. Anyone that you're looking? I don't know who's here because <laughs> I've just flown in from Nashville and no one's told me anything ah. except go there and get this award. So I'm very excited to see who's here and who's getting what. Fantastic. Well, have a great day and thanks okay, for your thank time. You. Thank you. Bye.